people want to jump in, and as soon as you, as soon as somebody gets it, let me know, and I want to keep talking so I don't look stupid here in front of everybody, uh, which I have an occasion to do. Um, I can, uh, I can look pretty, I can look pretty stupid, and sometimes I do. And I've got, I've got something to say here in a little bit that uh, is because I look stupid. All right, uh, somebody saying chapter four. Yeah, here we go. Uh, let's see here. No, no, no. no. So we built the wall. Okay, here we go. In verse 7, it came to pass that when Samballat and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites, Ashdod, that's the Philistines, by the way, heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped. They were very, very wroth and conspired. You don't believe in conspiracies? Well, you should. You don't believe there's a conspiracy to... Um, you don't believe there's a conspiracy to, to control what it is that you believe and control what you think? You don't believe there's a conspiracy out there? There it is. And they conspired all of them together to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. Um, I'm looking for the place where I can't remember who it was that came to them and said, why don't you, why don't you let us build with you because we serve the same God. Somebody help me find that, all right? Anyway, uh, back to what I was saying. Bible Christianity, Nehemiah 6, thank you very much. Maybe that's, maybe that's where it is. Um, but anyway, somebody, anyway, we'll find it in a minute. Um, being divisive for a just and a right cause is often necessary. I cannot fellowship with people who do not believe the scriptures. I've tried. I want to be a nice guy. I want to, I want friends. I don't want enemies. But I can't I can't go along with certain things. This is why I can't vote for Romney. As bad as I want Barack Hussein out of office, I can't vote for Mitt Romney. I am I am contrary to his gospel, to his way of life. I am contrary to his biblical ideas. I am contrary to that based upon what I see in the scriptures. I am contrary to that, and I can't go along with it. And so for those of you who have been made to feel bad, for those of you who have been labeled as you're divisive, for those of you who have been, for who have been run out of your church, because they didn't want you there. Ezra chapter 3. Thank you very much. I, knew, I thought it was in Ezra, but I wasn't sure. For those of you who have, been, who have had a label stuck on you. For those of you who have been kicked out of, who've had it. I've had people say, pastor, a pastor came to me and said, you should probably find another church. Why? Because you're trying to promote the King James Bible here, and we don't want that. We can't have that here. And so you can't do that, so please leave. And so they put you out. You weren't necessarily trying to cause division in your church. You were trying to follow what the Bible talked about, one faith, one baptism, one Lord that we all have the same mind and speak the same thing. How can we speak the same thing when one says thee and the other one says you? How can we do that? Well, we can't. How can we speak the same thing when you say a son of the gods and, and I say son of God? We can't do that. They're, they're mutually exclusive of one another. They, they are yin and yang, and they don't mix well. They don't mix at all. There is no light with darkness. There is no concord between Christ and Belial. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Let me read this out of Ezra. Uh, let's see here. I still don't see what I'm, what I'm looking for here. Ezra, did you say Ezra 3, 2 through 4? No, I still don't see it. Um, anyway, I should have come better prepared, but this was just kind of um, off the cuff here. Um, anyway, I'll move on. I'll move on to some weighty matters here. Um, anyway, the election, I don't know what's going to happen. I think our country's divided, 
and I think it could get nasty. I really do. Um, I know that, uh, and I've had confirmation. I mentioned something last week about people in our military who do not like the current president of the United States. If he is to be reelected for another four years, is there the possibility that there is going to be a crisis between the military and the chief executive? Is there a possibility? I would have to say yes. I got confirmation. I got an email from somebody. I won't give his name out. Uh, Google probably already knows it. But he said, Pastor Mike, you were dead on. He said, I'm in the military. And he said, I can tell you, we can't stand that guy. And they're talking about their commander in chief. America is not known by reputation for having military showdowns with the government. America is not known for mutiny. America is not known for soldiers disobeying orders. America is not known for there being crises and military coups and so on. I mean, you, the argument could very well be made that one of, one of the reasons why Kennedy slumped over dead in his limousine is because uh, Kennedy was going to, he was going to shut down Vietnam. That's a known fact. Was that the reason why he's dead? We don't know yet. But that was one of the things that was going on. Was there, in fact, as Eisenhower said before he left office, the power of the military-industrial complex? You know what? These guys have a lot of power. And if they don't like the guy in office, something can be done, legally or illegally. And I'm just saying to you that we live in a divided nation. And a kingdom, a nation, or a family, or a house divided against itself cannot stand. There are divisions in churches. There are divisions in the American home. Husbands hating wives. Wives hating husbands. Somebody called me last week saying, pray for my daughter and son-in-law. It's a terrible mess. I think they're going to get a divorce. The son-in-law called me today crying and he said i want my marriage to work out we i told him i'd prayed for him well you pray for this situation by the way you know who this is but you pray for him and uh there's hope there there really is um but there's division everywhere there is division amongst those who refer to themselves as christians there is division there you find this out when you open your mouth to an express to express an opinion. That's what Facebook is good for. Everybody's got a nose and everybody's got an opinion and they put it on Facebook. When you open your mouth to express an opinion, you find out that not everybody is going to go along with your opinion or your idea. If, you're, if your idea is right based upon the scripture, you're still not going to please everybody. I've had people where I've given them Scripture after scripture after scripture of what I say and what I believe, and they they won't get it. They still don't get it. And I'll say this: when it comes to issues that are like this, God God has to say, "Let there be light." I have I don't think I've ever convinced anybody to stick with, stand with, read, believe every word of the King James Bible. I think the Holy Ghost has done that in people, but I don't think I've done it. Because people tried to do it to me when I was on the other side, and it failed every time. It was the Holy Spirit that confirmed this in me. And when, it, when, I, when I got it from God, I got it. I didn't argue. It was there, and it still is. And I'm not backing down from anybody on this issue. But there are divisions. There are schisms. There are people with very, very deeply held ideas and beliefs that we try to win, that we try to we try to help them see it our way. We try to we there, there are people right now witnessing the Masons. They're using um, our material to say, well, you know, won't you at least take a look at this? If you've seen the Square and Compass videos and the the one why I'm not a Freemason, I mean, you understand my heart. I'm not out to just say, ah, you're all going to burn in hell. 
That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to show people, here's what the Bible says, here's what the Bible says, here's what the Bible says. Do you believe what the Bible says? Then you ought to go with that. There are people trying to witness to, to people. There are people trying to witness to cre uh, evolutionists. There are people trying to, trying to show people what's going on. And in some cases it's working, and in some cases it's not. And then there's divisions. There's schisms in families over, over theological issues, over issues that we never really even fought over. Now we're just we're fighting. Some of those fights are right. Some of them are not. Am I right on everything that comes out flying out of my mouth? Well, the answer is no. That's because I'm a man. I'm human. I make mistakes. I am in error. I am, as the Bible says, I am a liar. And I'm not God. God, however, is not a liar. And if God says something is this way, then what, what that is is exactly the way God said it. If God said the evening and the morning were the first day, I don't need I don't need any more evidence. I believe and stand with what the Word of God says. Um, here's what I'm getting at. I, I wrote him and told him that I was going to be doing this today. And um, I, bit, I just prayed about it all weekend. Prayed about it this I was, it was on my mind when I woke up this morning. And... Um, and and I, I wrote I wrote Rob Skiba a letter, uh, an email, and told him that I was going to apologize and retract what I had said on the program Thursday uh, concerning his affiliation or alleged affiliation with Bill Johnson and um, the uh, the the anti Bethel Church out in Redding, California. Um, According to Skiba, he is not affiliated with that. Um, he did, according to, uh, well, I'm not even going to say that. Um, according to Skiba, he's not affiliated with that. And um, he rebuked me pretty sharply for it. And so having having looked into it all weekend and into this morning, and not finding any clear evidence that he is, in fact, hooked up with Bill, uh, Bill Johnson, Bethel Church, Redding, California, and all of that stuff that goes on there. I have no, I have no evidence. I like to have a standard in what I do. I like to have a standard for how I treat my wife. Does that mean that I treat my wife according to that standard all the time? The answer is no. But it's a standard nonetheless that I like to keep. I like to have a standard for just my personal life. Does that mean that I achieve that standard every day? The answer is no. I try to have a standard for this broadcast and, and the things that I say. Uh, this broadcast is a little different than doing the Watchman broadcast. The Watchman broadcast, you don't know this. There's been times when I started talking on the Watchman broadcast, and I got 15 minutes into something, and all of a sudden I went, that is the stupidest thing that has ever come out of my